Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this lesson, we are going to learn inbound NAT rule. So far, we have covered how the load balancer works. But in Azure, inbound NAT, which is called network address translation rule, serves as a mean to enable external traffic to reach specific virtual machines or VM hosted within an Azure virtual network. This is achieved by utilizing an Azure load balancer public IP address and a designated port number. The primary purpose of inbound NAT role is to facilitate the routing to the traffic by associating each virtual machine with a particular front end port on a load balancer. When incoming traffic arrives at a specific front end port of the load balancer, it is then promptly directed to the intended target virtual machine. This function is very valuable in scenarios where you need to expose services or application hosted on different virtual machines to the broader internet using single public IP address. Inbound NAT rule effectively act as traffic directors ensuring that incoming traffic is routed to the appropriate VM based on the front end port number specified within the rule. This setup is component of distributing and balancing incoming traffic across virtual machines, ultimately enhancing the availability and scalability of application hosted within the Azure cloud. This is very simple concept of the port forwarding, which you might have done on the router or maybe on the firewalls. So in this example, what we are going to see here, there's a load balancer and I'm going to have a public IP address assigned on top of that. Then I need to configure a NAT inbound rule. And let's assume as of now, I'm running a application 3389 on this machine. So if I want to redirect my traffic a user which is hitting the load balancer, I need to define some port here. And that port will be basically mapped to this port. So when the traffic basically comes from the user, it hits the load balancer on a particular port, then it is going to get forwarded to the destined virtual machine. You can also have multiple machines and you can create a pool. So in this case, this is a pool and I have two machines running the RDP. Now, this is going to be a big range I mentioned for the TCP ports. So you need to define a range. That range will look like based on how many machines you're going to have in a pool. So in this example, if I have two machines running the RDP, I can define a port 8001, 8002. So anytime a request comes to public IP address on port 8001 that will get redirected to my first VM. And if the request comes for 8002, that get redirected to my second machine in this pool. NAT inbound rule and load balancing rule, they can coexist. What it mean if I have a pool of VMs that is and the host within that might be running the multiple ports. So for example, for the web traffic, I'm running port 80. So I will configure a load balancer rule and the moment traffic heads to the public IP address on a particular port, in this case, let's assume it's going to be the 80. And then this load balancer rule will redirect port 80 to these two virtual machines of the pool. And as I mentioned, this NAT inbound rule can coexist you, so you might have is still running those RDP sessions, support 8001 and 2 if the traffic comes to port 8001 it goes to my first machine on the RDP and for port 002 it goes to the second machine so they can coexist let's now take a look how to configure the NAT inbound rule so we'll go to the LB and in this LB, previously we have configured the load balancing rules and this is time we are going to configure inbound NAT rule. Under the inbound NAT rule, click on the add. 
and here you need to mention the rule which you're going to configure so I'm going to say this is a rule second rule on LB you have a type you can directly target to Azure virtual machine or you can configure the backend pool as well so if you configure the Azure virtual machine you need to put a target so for example this is my first machine this is the IP address this is a front-end IP address what is going to be the port so I'm still running port 80 here what we can do let's do some sort of the redirection so if I want mention port 8001 and it should go to the back end port of 80 protocol is going to be the TCP and I'm going to leave the rest as it is. Deployment is in progress. And what I'm expecting this time when I'm going to hit this public IP address 172.190.124.135 on port 8001, we should land to port 80, which is running on the back end. So we'll see that. Now this configuration is done. Let me try to hit from the web browser. Let's try to browse public IP on port 8001. We should land to the same machine, VM1. And that's exactly what we see. It means this port redirection works. Now I'm going to delete this rule and we will test the NAT inbound on pool. Might take a couple of seconds. This is succeeded and now it's time to add this for the pool. So I'm going to put rule number three and this is going to be the LB and this time I'm going to choose the backend pool. My pool is going to be the existing pool. My front end IP is going to be the same and we need to put a range from where it starts. I'm going to put 8001 and here you can mention how many machines you're going to have. So in this case I have only two so I will just mention the two and my backend port is going to be port 80 because I'm running application on that if you have some other application running you can mention that protocol is going to be the TCP rest of the setting I'm going to leave as it is let's try to add it now I'll pause the video and come back once this is done now the third rule what we created it is in place and we see there's a front-end IP and there's going to be a range of the front-end ports since we have only two servers hence the range is going to be 8001 to 2. What it mean? Why do we have two ports? So that is a thing we need to explore and what how we are going to explore it let's take a look. If you click on the rule, basically you are going to see these endpoints. Earlier we had one, now since these two machines they are part of the pool, you are having two. If you browse this URL, 
it will take you to the mapping to the resource which is vm1 if you browse the second url you are going to land it to the vm2 that is how it is going to do the redirection let's do a validation from browser so if i browse 8001 it goes to vm1 if i try 8002 this time you should go to the vm2 my existing load balancing algorithm it should still work so if i go for port 80 it takes me to a load balancer pool member based on the algorithm so that shows nat in mount lb rules they can coexist and it depends on your application the way you want to design the option you are going to choose thank you for watching and i will see you in the next section